put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Expendables 2. Moo review. The Expendables team is back. This time they are on a mission to hunt down and kill Vilain. Yes, just one letter away from the word villain. And his Cartel for Hire. You know, I didn't even realize those existed, and that's probably because they don't. Who have stolen five tons of plutonium. And... Yeah, I that pretty well covers it for the plot. Stallone is back determined as ever to prove that you don't need an actor to make an action movie. Or even for the action guys to be particularly young. Actually, I suppose the one exception to both of those is Liam Hemsworth. What is he doing here? He's not really an action hero. And again, he did lose the role of Thor, who was brother. That has sent me on a murder frame page. Okay then, this is better than the first one, definitely. Let me make that clear right up front. I had much more fun watching this movie than I did the first one. So I'm going to be comparing this to that one. <sighs> Having already mentioned Villain, I I should talk more about him. It is, of course, Jean-Claude Van Damme's carrier. Yes, they made him French, I think. Because you pretty much can't... You know, he's got the accent. You can't really make us believe that he's not from some kind of French or, you know, similar country. And he is just this utter, superficially characterized, muhahaha evil villain. It's, it's kind of comical, the way they just, yeah, I mean, he's, he's like killing innocent people and making just anyone he can get his hands on do hard physical labor. Actually, I think he might be running for Republican candidate. Anyway, he's a lot of fun. I, I'm pretty sure Van Damme enjoyed playing this role about as much as I enjoyed watching him in it. He's got this really great evil grin. It's just... Awesome. He he really looks. You just wanna. You really hope he gets his comeuppance. You you love to hate him, and he's also got these bitchin' shades. I yeah. Now this reunites the cast of the first one, and while they maintain their respective kind of trademarks, they still don't stand out all that much, and they certainly don't really, 
I mean, all of them are just these unstoppable killing machines. Any one of them is a one-man army, and so there's not that much to really... Th this didn't really do what I kind of hoped, which is let some of the other guys enter the spotlight. I mean, I don't really blame them for trying to keep some of these guys from acting any more than they have to, but I do still, I mean, they could cast other, you know, I mean, not everyone who plays an action hero is, you know, a mediocre actor. I mean, there's, Okay, point taken. Well, actually, there is Bruce Willis, and he does get to do a little bit more in this one. And yes, Arnie is in it. And so is Chuck Norris, and he wasn't even trying to sell me exercise equipment. It's really weird. But yeah, the focus remains on just a few. I suppose I shouldn't be saying who here. I'll make it the first part of the spoiler video for anyone who really badly wants to know. Now, something that this does do better than the first one on the Expendables team is they really feel like a, a gang of war buddies. You can really tell. I Watching this movie, I believe these guys have been in a ton of war together and they don't really see an end to it but they've got each other so they've got that kind of like bromance going where they're they're used to each other they're not necessarily always happy to be around each other but they know each other's habits and that kind of stuff. And I thought that worked quite well. And this also really balances these macho lines and exchanges much better than the first one. The first one had just way too much of that in, in one place. In general, this one is much more balanced, much more even than the first. And, yeah, I, I really wouldn't particularly say that there was too much of the macho, you know, exchanges in one place. The dialogue, other than that, is fine. Nothing special. You're not really going to be remembering too much of it. They have this thing where they will have these various icons say uh, iconic lines at each other and uh, like the person saying the iconic line will not be the person who originally said the iconic line but the person he's saying it to was the person who did originally say that iconic line stuff like that it's it's cute i guess it is okay it's it's amusing enough and there is this one bit where they basically three times in a row say the exact same line. Like maybe there's a little bit of difference to the words, but they're saying the same thing. I, I don't know, maybe like the script editor accidentally hit copy paste three times in a row and didn't notice or something. One thing I should definitely say about the camaraderie is that this time the team is joined by a woman, the Chinese Maggie. And that's obviously not something they're used to. And it does... <laughs> I guess I can... Do go ahead and give it away. Gunner, you know, Lundgren, he's kind of the comic relief. I think he sort of was in the, I don't know, was he really in the first one? Anyway, in this one, he's definitely the comic relief. 
and he's kind of got a thing for her, and he's like trying to hit on her, and he is just failing miserably, and it's it's pretty funny, and they they deal with it really well. There's no oh you're a woman or a woman can't do this kind of crap. It's just she kicks ass. She she really holds her own. She doesn't need their help. And in fact, sometimes she helps them. It, and it's not like a, you know, overly rad femme kind of thing of women are tougher than men. It's just equal. It, and I felt it really worked. I, I didn't feel like there was anything where it was... Actually, there's, there's a couple of things where she does things that I wouldn't really have seen any of the anyone from the Expendables team doing. So they kind of say she can do things they can't and yeah, you know, complimentary. And yeah, she's she's really cool. The there's not really much change to the cast. Really, you know, we, we have this new bad guy. Ray Park lookalike Scott Atkins, who I realize has apparently been in a bunch of action stuff. I hadn't really, I didn't really know him. I'm, I'm sorry, I mistook him for Ray Park. A little bit disappointed it wasn't Ray Park, but whatever. He's the main henchman of the bad guy, and he's pretty cool. Other than that, you know, it's it's Sly, it's Statham, Terry Crews, Randy, I think, Couture, who pretty much fades right into the background. I, I forgot he was there for parts of the movies. The same for Lundgren, actually, and Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, it's... Th there's not too much overall su surprising. And this one has, you know, these, I don't know, are they even surprise cameos? Their, their names were on the poster this time. In the first one they were supposed to be surprise cameos, but the trailer gave them away. So in this one I guess they figured, well, the trailer's going to give them away. Might as well just stick them all over the promotional material. As I was saying, the, the balance. Th this is much more balanced than the first one. And that really shows in the action, where the first one basically had this little bit of action, like, in the first couple of scenes, and then this big stretch with no action, like, half an hour, maybe 45 minutes with no action, and then finally, they just, they suddenly remember, this is an action movie, we better put as much action in there as we possibly can. And we have this massive scene of just way too much action, and it gets exhausting almost immediately, and then it just goes on for like 15 minutes straight. This one has nothing like that. The action is very nicely sprinkled throughout the entire film. And I didn't really feel like the action scenes... They, they're definitely never too long. There's maybe one or two that are a little too short, but on the whole, you will be very satisfied with the action in this movie. I certainly was. And it's, of course, it's extremely bloody, violent, and gory. You know, heads blowing up, blood all over the place. And this one also comes up with some nice creative gags. I would say more than the first one. The trailer gives some of them away. Try to ignore that. Don't, maybe don't watch the trailer too close to watching the movie. Yeah. Now, the... One thing I will say about the action scenes is that this movie kind of has a really annoying habit of getting the 
team of expendables into a situation they can't get themselves out of, and then out of nowhere comes an action icon and saves them, and yeah, they, they reuse that a bit much. Like, once would have been fine, but yeah. Now, let me think. This also covers the action so much better than the first one. In the first one, I don't think Stallone is actually a bad director. I think he's just kind of gotten into a funk. Because I've seen him direct really well. As it is now, Simon West is a better action director. And, I mean, you can see why they chose him. He did... What was that? One... Con Air! Fifteen years ago, and yeah, that was pretty good. So, yeah. Anyway, in this, you can pretty much always tell what's going on in the action scenes. They're not overwhelming. They're just... They're, they're at the peak intensity they could be without being overwhelming. Pretty much. With... You know, a lot of stuff going on, and like I said, they, they will go on for several minutes. Of, you know, it breaks up a massive body count, a lot of stuff gets blown up and destroyed. But you don't lose track of what's going on. It... The camera isn't extremely close, and the editing is not unbelievably fast, so, yeah, you can actually piece... There, there were maybe, like, three times, yes, I think three times in the entire movie, in all of the action scenes where I actually lost track of what was going on, or I was slightly confused. Like, I thought that someone was hitting someone... Like, basically... There, you know, there, there are a couple of fight scenes, and... They kick ass, by the way. P pretty much all of the hand-to-hand -hand combat is really, really fun. And the climactic one is awesome. Anyway, sometimes it can... The guys fighting look similar, like in their clothing, for example, and I lost track of who was where, briefly, and that was it. And then there's one other sequence where I very briefly couldn't quite tell what was going on, but it was never straining. It was never uncomfortable to watch. And this definitely also does a better job of letting them get into situations they can't get out of, and kind of having these... Yeah, scenes where we actually feel like something might go wrong. The, the story gets going almost immediately. Like, there's... <sighs> the movie starts really, really well with a fantastic action scene. And then they retire to the bar. And I, I got flashbacks. My PTSD started to flare up. I was thinking, no, don't become the first movie. I'm begging you. They even brought back Charisma Carpenter. Okay, she's hot. I'll give her that, but... And then it ended. Almost as quickly as it started. Bruce Willis walks right into the movie. Tells them what they're going to be doing, and they start doing it. And we're in business, and the rest of the movie just flows very smoothly, much more smoothly, certainly, than the first one. And this one does have those emotional scenes where you're sort of supposed to connect with the characters, 
with one very important difference. You actually do connect with the characters. You actually do get into the stories they're telling. Partially because the actual sort of backstory and emotion is dealt by dealt with by people who actually know how to act and the lines are written much better. I'm not really saying that Mickey Rourke can't act. I think it was more the excuse me, the lines that he was given. Now this also has a more sort of it, it does a better job of making you care about stuff like hostages and yeah, the, the civilians who might get hurt and the I suppose that pretty well covers it pretty much delivers what it promises and once again there's the issue of not quite equal screen time for the icons and there's still this you know you just have them together in a pack you don't have that much you know so if, if you watch something like Okay, this is gonna sound absurd, but the Avengers. There's a bunch of heroes on a team there. They have stuff to do in the action scenes. That's what needs to happen with... I wouldn't mind an Expendables 3, not with how this one came out. I if, if they can keep it to at least this level, then I'll watch it. But they really should look into giving all the different characters something to do in, instead of just having them run around next to each other shooting it just they, they don't really distinguish themselves and considering that we've seen several of these guys take on armies in their own movies you know just by themselves in the 80s yeah, you, you end up kind of wondering why exactly they need to be a team if they're not doing things, you know, apart from each other. Although there's at least one action scene that, is, that does live up to that, that has them in different places, so that's good at least. Yes, I believe that covers it. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.